Hold up. Wait. Songwa actually sounds pretty good. Oh, wait, hold up. Is this Ikjun being blinded by love? <laughs> I think it is. Yo, but that's crazy though. They actually got Songwa to sing pretty good. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yes! Now this was an amazing finale. Just seeing how troubled our main characters were because of the surgeries. Was surgery the best option? Was I the best option to do the surgery? Should someone else do it? And just really seeing our characters continue to grow, not only as individuals, but as a group, and also as doctors, it's, dang, again, this was a good finale. So first, at the beginning of the episode, nothing much happened, just our characters at work, but the two things I want to talk about is, first, number one, can I just say how cute Mina was in the elevator, just smiling from cheek to cheek, telling So Kyung, hey, come into the elevator, even though the elevator was extremely packed, it was. And So Kyung, we know from his history, he does not go into an elevator when there's a lot of people. But because Mina insisted, he went in anyway. And then we see him smiling. And then in the back, we see Mina smiling from cheek to cheek. I thought that was really cute. And then the next scene, we have So Kyung and Ik Jun. They were basically uh, having the same scene that they had in season one where So Kyung locks his office door and Ik Jun on the other side of the door, basically talking like the voice you would hear at the train station. And then I want to get to this really cute scene of Song Gwa and Ik Jun having a meal together. It wasn't their official dinner date. I'll just call it pre-dinner date. So they were having sushi and Ik Jun asked Song Gwa, can we do something that couples do and that's feed each other? When Ik Jun closed his eyes and opened his mouth and he moved closer, I couldn't help but smile and laugh. Even Songwa laughed too, which made me even laugh. And then what was also pretty funny was that when Songwa was ready to do it, she grabbed a piece of sushi with her chopsticks, moved it towards Ikjun, but then she closed her eyes. I'm like, wait a minute. Um <laughs> why is why is the person feeding someone closing their eyes? <laughs> And then we finally see Songwa and Ik Jun going on a dinner date together. We finally get to see it only for a good two minutes because after that, Ik Soon called. She was nearby. She was at a party. She was literally across the street. So she came by, joined him for dinner. And then Junan called. And then Songwa gave him the address. What was funny was that the moment Songwa said Junan's name, both Ik Soon and Ik Jun froze for a bit. So now it's pretty much. Uh, a dinner date for four. Well, I wouldn't call it a double date because Iksun and Junan are not together, not yet. So it kind of just looks like a dinner date for two plus two. And then after that, we see Gil and Jungwon on their dinner date. To sum up theirs, it was pretty much um, Gil tells Jungwon that her mom wants to have dinner with the person she loves. How cute is that? Seriously. And then after that, we see Mina and So Kyung's date. To sum up theirs, is just two words. They kiss. And then after dinner, we see them go to karaoke and we see a performance by Ik Jun and Ik Sun. They did an amazing job. I'm going to go back and rewatch that because that was really, really good. There was one funny part where Ik Sun left the room and then came back, which was pretty funny. Um, not going to lie, when I saw her left the room, I thought maybe the song reminded her of Junan. That's why she left the room, but it was actually part of their performance. And then it came to Songwa singing. I was in shock when I heard Songwa sing pretty good. But it wasn't for real, real. It was actually from Ik Jun's point of view because he was blinded by love. So at the beginning, Songwa picked a song she was about to sing. Junan says, aren't you going to stop her? Ik Jun said, nope. Why should I? She wants to sing. Ik Soon asks, is she a good singer? Ik Jun says, yeah. I'm like, oh man, she's in for it. And then we hear Song Gwa sing, not surprising. But then while she was singing, we actually hear Song Gwa singing good for the first time in an episode in Hospital Playlist. We actually hear her sing pretty good 
but it was actually from Ikjun's point of view because he's blinded by love. He's pretty much in love. So, so for a good short moment, we actually got to hear her sing really, really well. Um, I did say in a previous review, it'll be awesome if we actually heard Sungwa sing really well. And yeah, it came true. And then for the next scene, we see Junan asking Hongdo a question in the elevator. First off, Hongdo and his sister are stressed out. They're tired. I can only imagine what they went through. But overall, they are tired. When Junan went into the elevator, of course, when you see Junan and Hongdo together, Junan is always going to ask a question. Most of the time, if not all of the time, Hongdo does not answer Junan's questions right then and there. But for the first time, Junan actually asks an easy, easy question question. He asked Hongdo, where do you live? And for some reason, I don't know why, but Hongdo does not answer that question right then and there. It was such an easy question, but that's just my opinion. But I'm pretty sure he does tell him when Junan gave him a ride. And speaking of characters being stressed out, we see our main five really troubled by the surgeries that they had to perform. Like for example, for Jungwon, he was questioning if the surgery was the best option for Junan, he was questioning if he was the best option to perform that surgery or if someone else who is more experienced than him should perform it. And yeah, we just see everyone really stressed out, really tensed up. And the one scene that really sums up how everyone is so tensed up and so stressed out because of the surgeries they had to perform, if you go to the one hour and 18 minute mark, just seeing everyone freeze for a second. Well, I thought they froze for a second just to add a dramatic effect, but everyone was just moving slowly. The camera just pans out and just moves everywhere in the surgery room. And just seeing everyone freeze for a bit and just hearing the music, that pretty much sums up how everything is just so dramatic and tensed up. And then towards the end of the episode, well, I should say maybe the last 30 minutes, we get... A lot of news. Good news, bad news, however you want to take it. The first thing we get is Jungwon is actually leaving. He's leaving the next year and he's leaving to go to the U.S. Gil is going to go with him. And the reason why he's leaving is because he wants to study more on small bowl transplantation because of Sungche. He wants to have more knowledge of it. So the next patient who has the same well, who's in the same situation as Sungje, he'll be ready and to perform the surgery with no problems. And then after Jungwon made his announcement, it really made our main five realize that, man, we, we really don't have a lot of time now because they're busy with work. They barely have time for band practice. Uh, they barely have time to actually get together, not at work, you know, just to talk and eat and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, things are changing a lot. And then we see Duna. For those who don't remember Duna or kind of forget her because she does appear here and there, but it's the girl who got into the motorcycle accident who needed um, to retrain how to walk and her speech as well. She's she's better now. She's going home. Um, to be honest, I was wondering what happened to her. We saw her. Well, the last time we saw her was in the last episode, but it was just one quick scene and that was it. But it's good to know that the character is doing well and going home. Then after that, we see her mom crying in the bathroom. And she received a text from Duna saying that she apologized, that she lashed out on her and so forth. You know, because Duna, she was in a situation where she couldn't do anything for herself. Not even one thing. And her mom was just doing this and that for her. But her mom was helping her because she couldn't do anything. But that feeling of not being able to do anything for yourself... Yeah, it sucks. And it sucks to have other people do it for you. So I understand from both sides. Then we get to Jayak. Uh, this is the most vulnerable I've seen Jayak throughout season one and season two. So when Junan asked him what's wrong, he told him he met the family of the scammer who scammed him two years ago. And the scammer was afraid that he was going to go to jail. So if he settled with Jayak, he he would probably not have probation. In the end, Jayak does settle with the scammer and he did get his money back. And then we see Jayak crying. And I kind of think the most important thing is that Jayak got his money back. But 
I mean, there are different sides to the situation where if you were in Jayok's position, would you have sent the scammer to jail? Would you have done the same thing that he did? And to be honest, I really don't know what I would do because, yeah, I can look at the side of being angry. I got scammed. I got my money taken. And the next time I see you or if you get caught, I'm going to send your butt to jail and I won't care about it. But then you can also look at the side of, I met the scammer's family. They may be going through something and maybe the scammer is doing this so he or she can help their family. And yeah, it's that type of situation. And then after that, we see Junan visiting Iksun to sum up their relationship. They're back together. They hugged. That's good that they're back together. Then after that, it goes back to Jayat and we see his wife giving birth. We now know that his wife is doing well after her chemotherapy, and yeah, she's doing great. And then to end the episode, well, I should say to end the finale, we see our main five outside of the hospital staring at the sunset, and then we see the words, thank you for watching Hospital Playlist. And that was the end of the episode. So my impression on this episode, they did an amazing job closing out season two, uh, they pretty much gave everyone a happy ending. The main characters, supporting characters, some of the patients, uh, some of them not so much. Uh, but yeah, the fact that they ended it that way, I wouldn't change anything. But but if you think about it, even if there's no season three, they pretty much ended their story, but also continue it as well. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, I love how Songwa revealed her relationship with Ik Jun, and I love how the other guys treated it as a joke. That was pretty funny. Um, everyone is pretty much coupled up, if you think about it. So Junan and Ik Sun, Seok Kyung and Mina together, Jungwan and Gil are still together, and now Ik Jun and Songwa are together. So our main five are definitely in a relationship. You know, they have a su significant other, which was, which is pretty good. Now my impression on season two of Hospital Playlist, oh man, where do I start? First, I just loved everything about season two. Just seeing the stories of our characters being expanded and really seeing their characters being developed, not only as individuals, but also as a group, uh, putting more spotlight on the supporting characters as well. If you think about season one, I'll say the majority of the spotlight was our main characters because since it's season one, you want the viewers to really know the main characters. Now for season two, you already know the main characters. Now really dive into some of the supporting characters. But also for season two, it was a good balance of putting the spotlight on our main characters and our supporting characters and really intertwining their story together. It doesn't matter if they were dating or if they were beginning to become close friends like Junan and Jayak. If there is a season three, if Jungwon is moving, well, he's not moving. He's just leaving for one year. If he's leaving for one year, I wouldn't be surprised if Junan moved in with Jayak. <laughs> it's not going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised. Now, is there going to be a season three for Hospital Playlist? To be honest, to be completely honest, I don't think so. And to be honest again, they don't need a season three because, well, first, in season one, they left on a cliffhanger. Mina asking Seok Kyung on a date, uh, Ik Jun revealing his feelings to Song Gwa. Those were, those were cliffhangers. But for season two, everyone had a good story ending. Uh, the finale ended it with the main five staring at the sunset. And yeah, to be honest, since everyone had a good ending, there's really no need for season three. I mean, they can expand on the story if they wanted to. But just coming from a viewer's point of view, yeah, it really doesn't need a season three. Everyone is doing good. Everyone is moving on and continuing their life. And yeah, there's really no need for season three. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the finale and my review. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who has been enjoying my review for Hospital Playlist Season 2. I know this has been quite the ride and a, well, I should say a relaxing yet bumpy ride for Hospital Playlist because just, just being a fan of the show, you're just so invested into the characters and the story. You just want the characters to have a good ending and everyone had a good ending which I'm okay with that. Well, I'm happy for that. Not just okay, I'm happy. So yeah, again, thank you so much for enjoying my reviews and whatever comes next, I hope you guys enjoy it. Other than that, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. See ya.